Hey there, it's been a while. Sorry about the prolonged absence, but I'm back with another Hardcore Nuzlocke. Today, we're going to see if I can beat Pokemon Fire Red with only Flying-type Pokemon. I'll list the full set of rules in the description below, but in short, I can only use Flying-type Pokemon in battle, no items in battle, and I can't overlevel my Pokemon. Kanto has quite a few Flying-type Pokemon. Here are the Pokemon available with the Flying-type, aside from the Legendary Birds. A few of them don't get the Flying-type until they evolve, like Charizard, but per my rules, I'll allow any Pokemon that evolves into a Flying-type to be used, but I can't use them in battle until they get the Flying-type. I also won't be allowing Dragonite for this run because I feel it's too strong. I usually don't allow Gyarados and normal Nuzlocks, but for the purposes of this challenge, I decided it was fair game. A choice that I may regret by the end of this run. That's enough preamble, let's get started. I name my rival Gravity, and try to head off on the journey, but Professor Oak restricts my freedoms. In return, he offers to give me a Pokemon, so naturally I choose Charmander as it'll evolve into a flying type. But, that won't be for a very long time. I name him American, and he has a Timid Nature, which is plus speed and minus attack, which is actually not too bad considering most of the Pokemon I'm going to be using this run are physical attackers, and I plan on making Charizard a special attacker anyways. But, that won't be for a while. So once I get some Pokeballs after running Professor Oak's errands for him, I head back up to Route 2 and I get our actual starter, Pidgey. I catch him and I name him Frontier. Frontier has an impish nature, which is plus defense and minus special attack, which is actually pretty good because we're not going to have a lot of bulky Pokemon, so I'll take the extra defense. Now that I have Frontier, I deposit American into the box and I head over to Route 22 where I can get the second member of our team, Spearow. I try to weaken it with Tackle, but Frontier misses two in a row and we get crit to just 10 HP. So we're not off to a great start. I decide to just throw a Pokeball and thankfully avoid Disaster and catch Spearow, who I named Spirit. Spirit has a bashful nature, which is neutral. The third member of our team requires me to catch another non-flying type Pokemon, Caterpie from Viridian Forest. I name him Southwest and I switch train until he finally evolves into a Butterfree. Without Butterfree, getting past Brock would be really tedious and frustrating. Now it's time to take on Brock and I think I have a pretty solid strategy here. His Geodude only knows Tackle and Defense Curl, and I need Southwest to be as healthy as possible for Onyx. And I also need to set up a few Harden to vastly reduce the chances of dying to Rock Tomb, unless we get crit, but there isn't much we can do about that. So I lead with Frontier and I hit Geodude with 6 Sand Attacks, then we switch to Spirit for 6 Growls. That way when Southwest comes in, Geodude is very unlikely to land a Tackle, and even if he does, it won't do much damage. I set up 6 Hardens, and Geodude finally hits a Tackle once and does a whopping 2 damage, and we take it out with Confusion. Southwest then levels up and learns a very important move, Sleep Powder. Thanks to his Compound Eyes ability, Sleep Powder has 97.5% accuracy. Onyx is going to be a 3 hit KO with Confusion, and thankfully we hit Sleep Powder, and his Onyx never wakes up and we take it out. Even though all of that prep ended up being unnecessary, all it would have taken is Sleep Powder to miss and Rock Tomb to crit, and we would have wiped. So, I'm glad everything went smooth. Now that Brock is out of the way, I head over to Mount Moon and I can technically get another encounter here as this man is selling a Magikarp at the Pokemon Center. But because I can catch a Gyarados later on, and because I feel like having Gyarados this early would be a bit too strong, I decide against it for now. And instead I head into Mount Moon and get our fourth team member, Zubat. I catch her and I name her Delta. Unfortunately, she can't evolve into a Crobat. She ends up having a Rash Nature, which is plus special attack and minus special defense, which honestly is better than it sounds. Because while Golbat isn't particularly strong, it can learn some important coverage moves that happen to be special attacking moves. I get through Mount Moon and I make it to Cerulean City and I heal up. Then I grind the team up and Frontier evolves into a Pidgeotto and we get ready to take on Gravity. He leads with his own Pidgeotto, but clearly he's cheating as it's only level 17, but our superior, real Pidgeotto wins the fight. Next is Rattata and it goes down to two quick attacks. He sends in Squirtle and Frontier is a bit low, so I swap into Southwest who lands a Sleep Powder and then five hits from Confusion takes down his starter. Last up is Abra, so I send in Delta who's intentionally under leveled because Zubat is pretty terrible at this point in the game and I don't want to risk anyone important going over the level cap because it can be a pretty tight gap between here and the next gym. It takes four hits from Leech Life which is very pathetic, but we take it out and we win the battle. While battling the trainers north of Cerulean City, Spirit evolves into a Fero, which is huge because without it, Misty would be really difficult. I get the SS and ticket from Bill after saving him from his cosplaying mistake, and then I get the team ready to take on Misty. Thanks to the Secret Power TM, we're able to one-shot Starmie. Starmie comes in and Secret Power does just under half, which is not good because Starmie does about the same with Water Pulse. We hit another and bring her into the red, but thankfully we get the Paralysis, and then she just goes for recover. Another Secret Power brings it back to the red, and Starmie is fully paralyzed. 
Unfortunately, Missy uses a super potion. We hit another secret power and then brings it down to the red for a third time, and Starmie is fully paralyzed. That's some pretty good luck right there. One more hit takes it out, and we earn our second badge. With the second badge and SS and Ticket in hand, we head down to Vermilion City and we have another Pokemon to add to the team. Now normally I don't like trading with the NPCs because it usually requires me to catch a non-flying type Pokemon, but Farfetch'd is pretty weak and it can learn cut, so I figured it's fine. While fighting trainers on the SSN, Delta evolves into Golbat and finally isn't completely useless. It's time for another battle with Gravity. There really isn't a way to avoid being at a much higher level than him at this point in the game, so this battle is a clean sweep with secret power. After a very uncomfortable interaction with an old man, he bribes us with the HM for cut to not tell anyone about it. I bring everyone up to the level cap, and after definitely solving the puzzle in the first try and definitely not struggling to open the doors for a painfully long amount of time, we're ready to take on the electric gym which should be pretty terrifying for our all-flying team. However, his first two Pokemon are wildly underleveled compared to the level cap, and both of them go down to one shot with Secret Power. Raichu comes out, and Secret Power does about 80% and paralyzes, as Raichu retaliates with Thunder Wave, but our berry cures a paralysis. Lieutenant Surge then draws up a very terrible battle plan of healing his paralysis instead of his HP, and Spirit takes him down with another Secret Power. Fero is kind of a badass in the early game. I get the HM for Flash, and I teach it to Southwest, because while I can navigate Rock Tunnel without it, there's quite a few trainers with rock types that I would rather just avoid. We manage to get through unscathed and make it to Lavender Town, and from here we can get a new team member. I head on over to Celadon City and I get the coin case from this depressed man who lost it all. And I can technically get a Scyther from the game corner, but it's also possible to catch one in the Safari Zone, so I figured I should try to catch one naturally first, and if not, I'll come back and get one. I do head over to Route 16 to find our next team member, and Frontier almost kills it with a critical hit tackle. Thankfully she lives, and we catch her and name her United, which I accidentally typed in all caps and have to go and change afterwards because it would have driven me crazy. She managed to live on just 1 HP and has a mild nature which is minus defense and plus special attack, which is pretty awful, and explains why she almost got one shot by Frontier. I continue on to get the HM for Fly before heading back to Celadon to take on Erica, where this creepy old man is staring at underage women through a window. Instead of calling the police, I head inside and challenge Erica to a battle. I don't even bother leveling up to the level cap here, as none of her Pokemon can do anything to Delta. Even while being underleveled and paralyzed multiple times, Delta sweeps through her entire team and earns us the 4th gym badge. This is pretty important because now our level cap increases all the way to level 43. I go back to the Pokemon Tower and demolish Gravity again. I could have done this battle a little bit earlier, but honestly it would have been just as easy then as it was now, so it doesn't really matter. I head back to the Rocket Hideout, and while fighting Grunts, United evolves into a Dodrio. I get through the hideout and I make it to Giovanni, who would be pretty difficult with his Rock-type Pokemon, but Delta can learn the move Giga Drain, which we got from Erica, so she's able to one-shot both Onix and Rhyhorn, and then he sends in his Kangaskhan. This thing is a little bit scary. He uses Fake Out, but Delta has Inner Focus, and then lands a Confuse Ray. I decide to go for a Wing Attack, which doesn't do much, and Kangaskhan breaks through Confusion and lands a massive Mega Punch and brings Delta too low to stay in, so I send in Front Hero also gets pummeled by a Mega Punch and I have to switch again. So I send in Farfetch to hit some sand attacks, and eventually he gets hit with Mega Punch and goes down. Our first death of the run. This allows for a clean switch and a spirit to finish off the Kangaskhan. After the battle, Golbat tries to evolve into a Crobat, but it can't. And unfortunately, this is going to happen after every single level up, which is super annoying. I'm not sure whose idea this was to put this into the game, but it definitely wasn't their best idea. I get the Sylph Scope, and after defeating Giovanni, I head back to the Pokemon Tower and make my way to the top and rescue Mr. Fuji, who gives me the Poke Flute. And now that all of this is out of the way, there are a ton of new team members available. I head to the south of Lavender Town, and I wake up the Snorlax, whom I run away from because that thing is terrifying, and I'm not risking a death fighting it. Now that the path is clear, I get a Super Rod and I fish up at Gyarados. I catch her, and I name her Jet Blue. She has a hasty nature, which is plus speed and minus defense, which is pretty good. I fly back to Celadon City and head through Route 18 to Fuchsia City, where I can finally try and catch a Scyther in the Safari Zone. There's about a 4% chance of encountering one in the entrance, and after a ton of spinning in circles, I finally encounter one. I throw a ball, and it immediately breaks out and runs away. Well, that sucks. I get to the end of the Safari Zone, and I get the HM for Surf, and I also return the Warden's Teeth to him for the Strength HM. Then I deposit Frontier and welcome American back to the team, because now that the level cap is up to 43, I can evolve him into a Charizard. After gambling for a little bit and buying the rest of the necessary coins from the game corner, I deposit Spirit, who has been an absolute rock star, and buy a Scyther that I name Allegiant. He has a hasty nature as well. I then go to the move deleter and get rid of Flash on Southwest and teach him the TM for Psychic, as he's the only Pokemon on our team that can learn it. After getting everyone up to speed, American finally evolves into a Charizard and gets the Flying-type. 
I know he's got a minus attack nature, but I'm not sure I've ever seen a Charizard with such a pathetic attack stat. Turns out he has zero attack IVs. I get the team to level 37 and take on the fighting dojo, but as you can imagine, Allegiant had no issues taking everyone out. I clear out all of the trainers in Koga's gym and in Sylph and get the team to level 40. Here's an updated look at their stats and their moves as I get ready for another battle with Gravity. I decide to lead with American against his Pidgeot and I take it out with two flamethrowers. He sends in Blastoise so I send in JetBlue who takes it out with a few strengths. He then decides that the best option that he has left to take out Gyarados is Growlithe. So, he gets KO'd by a Surf. Then he sends an Execute, so I send American back in who gets paralyzed, then lands a Flamethrower after tanking a Confusion. Last is his Alakazam, but its only attacking move is Future Sight, so I leave American in and after being paralyzed, take it down with Flamethrower. I heal up and then I head up to Giovanni. He leads with Nidorino and I lead with Delta, who takes it out with three hits from Wing Attack. Next in is Rhyhorn and we take it out with Giga Drain. Then the murderer Kangaskhan comes out. I land Confuse Rain and hurts itself in confusion as I swap to Jet Blue for the Intimidate. Strength does decent damage, but we get hit with a Tail Whip and I decide to send in American, who also gets hit with a Defense Drop. But Flamethrower is enough to take it down. Last up is Nitto Queen, so I send in Jet Blue once again and we get hit with a Tail Whip again. This time I decide to stay in and Surf does just over half, and a second one takes it down. Now, with both gym leaders being the same level cap, I clear out Sabrina's gym trainers, then level up the team but I make sure to leave some wiggle room just in case anyone has to sub in for the battle with Koga to make sure that I don't have anyone over level that I'm going to need for Sabrina. I decided it would be best to fight Koga first. Following the trend of the rest of the game, all of his Pokemon aside from his ace are vastly under level from the cap. Southwest is able to one-shot Coughing with Psychic, Muck is a two-hit KO after it's put to sleep, and his next Coughing is also a one-hit KO, but we crit for good measure. Last up is Weezing. I put it to sleep and use Psychic and it puts it into heal range, but after two Hyper Potions, we take it out and defeat Koga. With Southwest over the level cap and one more flying Pokemon available to me, I deposit him into the box and thank him for his service. Southwest was an absolute badass for us, and we wouldn't have made it this far without him. Now it's time to take on Sabrina. I lead with JetBlue and he's able to one-shot Kadabra with Strength. Mr. Mime is also a one-hit KO with Strength. Next is Venomoth, who survives in the red but just misses a 55% accurate Supersonic. I go for Dragon Rage and then take it out with Strength on the next turn. Alakazam is last and survives a Strength in the red, and then hits hard with Psychic. But we take it out on the next turn and defeat Sabrina. I head to Cinnabar Island from Pallet Town and it's time to get our last team member. I go for a walk and I come back to get the Aerodactyl. I name her Atlas. She has a lax nature which is plus defense and minus special defense which is fine. Then I get her leveled up before heading back to the Pokemon Mansion to get the key for Blaine's gym. Once again, Blaine's ace is substantially higher level than the rest of his team, and this battle is a bit of a joke. JetBlue is able to one-shot his first three Pokemon with Surf, and her special attack isn't even very good. He sends in his Arcanine, who does survive a Surf and then hits us with a takedown before Blaine heals with a Hyper Potion. But two more Surfs take it down, and we have the seventh badge. As I exit the gym, Bill asks me, a child, to come with him on his boat to some island with his friend. And I decline the offer because I've seen this story before, and let's just say, there's a lot of ways this can go poorly for me. The level cap's now at 50, and there's one final gym leader, Giovanni. Once again, this battle is a bit trivial, as JetBlue is able to sweep through his entire team with Surf. This is why I normally ban Gyarados from regular Nuzlocks, and to be honest, I may do so in future Monotype flying or water runs, depending on the game, because this makes things a bit too easy. From the gym, I go straight to Route 22 to take on Gravity. At this point, JetBlue knows Dragon Dance, and after setting up a few on Pidgeot, we take it out with Strength. Rhyhorn and Growlithe go down to Surf's, but we get hit with Intimidate in the process. Execute does still go down in one hit to Strength, as does Alakazam. Blastoise is up who survives a Strength, but barely does any damage, and goes down to another Strength. Yeah. No more Gyarados for me after this playthrough. All that's left is Victory Road in the Elite Four. Lance's highest level Pokemon is level 60, but I decided to cap myself at level 58 because the first three trainers are lower leveled, and it's already been a bit too easy to get here. I get through Victory Road and I make it to the Indigo Plateau. At this point, I just need to get the team leveled up and optimize their moves. Here's what I went with. I taught Rest to JetBlue in case she takes too much damage while setting up Dragon Dances. I got the TM for Shadow Ball for Delta in case I need it for Agatha. American has pretty limited moves since his attack stat is so poor, but thankfully Dragon Claw is special in this game, so it could be valuable against Lance. I taught Earthquake to Atlas and I got the move Substitute from a Move Tutor for Allegiant. I'm feeling pretty confident my team is ready for the challenge, so it's time to take on the Elite Four. First up is Lorelei, and her Ice types would be really difficult to deal with, but we have a Gyarados. I lead with JetBlue and set up Dragon Dance, as her Dugong goes for Hail. I go for another Dragon Dance and we get hit with an Ice Beam, and at this point I realized, if we'd gotten frozen, I don't really know what I would have done. But thankfully, that doesn't happen. And after three Dragon Dances, I take out Dugong with Return. Next in is Cloyster, who survives a Return in the red before she heals. After stalling with a couple of Protects, we finish off Cloyster and Slowbro comes in. It too survives in the red and hits us with Yawn. So I decide since I'm going to be put to sleep anyway, I should just heal up and go for rest. 
After a few turns, we wake up and finish off Slowbro. Jinx has low defense and is an easy one-hit KO with return, and last in is Lapras, who also goes down to a return. Next up is Bruno, and my utter lack of preparation and assumption that this would be a free win becomes very obvious. Once again, I lead with Jet Blue, and I knock out the Onyx with Surf. Him on Chen is next, and I go for Surf, and it does next to nothing. And then we get it with a Rock Tomb. Afterwards, we take it out with a Return. Machamp comes in next, but for whatever reason, I decide to go for Surf instead of Return, which doesn't do a lot of damage. Then he goes for Bulk Up, which is pretty terrifying. For whatever reason, I convince myself another Surf is the right move, and we get hit hard with Rock Tomb and down to just 56 HP. JetBlue is now even slower, so I have to switch, but everything feels pretty risky to swap in on a Rock Tomb. I decide to send an Atlas, and thankfully Machamp misses. Then a Wing Attack crit takes out Machamp. That was very sloppy. Onyx comes in next, and I send in Delta because this Onyx doesn't have a Rock move, and I take it down with Giga Drain. Last in is Hitmonlee, so I swap back into Atlas, and Hitmonlee just misses a Mega Kick, then goes down to a Wing Attack. If Machamp had just gotten off another bulk up or two, that would have at the very least resulted in a few deaths. Which I would have deserved for being lazy and assuming I could just breeze through the fighting trainer. Next up is Agatha, and unlike Bruno, I have a concrete plan on how to beat her. Because her first Gengar loves to use status moves, I'm able to lead with Allegiant and use Substitute, then set up three Swords Dance as she goes for a couple of double teams. But I taught Allegiant Aerial Ace for this exact reason, and from here it's a clean sweep through her team. If I were a little better at Nuzlocking, I would probably ban setup moves too, but we're not quite there yet. Last up is Lance, and I'm a bit worried because his Gyarados has Intimidate, which is tough, because most of our damage is physical. I lead with my own Gyarados, and we intimidate each other, and I go for Dragon Dance as he hits with Dragon Rage. Next turn, he just goes for Bite, and we're able to set up another Dragon Dance. We manage to get off four Dragon Dances, and after waking up from rest, we take it down. Aerodactyl is next, and I know I can't kill it with Surf, but we take it down to the red, and it just goes for Scary Face. He heals, and then two more Surfs take it down. The two Dragonair go down to a single return, and then he sends out his Dragonite, who lives on just one HP after a return but it just goes for Safeguard. If Lance had simply decided to attack us with Aerodactyl and Dragonite, that could have gone a bit differently, but in the end, it was a clean sweep. We've made it through the Elite Four, and only the champion remains. Our arch nemesis, Gravity. I can't really set up Dragon Dances against Pidgeot as it knows Feather Dance, and I can't use Allegiant to set up because it's weak to flying moves. So I lead with Atlas to take it out with two Ancient Powers. This is also going to bait out his Blastoise, so I can switch into Jet Blue and set up Dragon Dance. He hits us with two Hydro Pumps to just above half, and we get off two Dragon Dances, but then he goes for Rain Dance, which means another Hydro Pump might put us into crit range. So I decide to go for a return, and we get hit to just 35 HP with a Hydro Pump. We heal up a bit with a Citrus Berry and take it down with a return. And then for whatever reason, he sends in Rhyhorn, who easily goes down to a Surf. Alakazam then comes in, but fortunately we outspeed and take it out with a return. Executor is next, and I go for Rest to heal up, but Egg Bomb does surprisingly high damage. So after a second one, I send an American, who also gets hit pretty hard with an Egg Bomb. But at this point, I basically can't lose, and I decide to go for a completely unnecessary and disrespectful overheat to obliterate his executor. His last Pokemon is Arcanine. Can't do much to Atlas, so after a few earthquakes, he goes down, and we've defeated the Elite Four. This was a pretty interesting run. I feel like having Gyarados made things a bit too easy, and I expected this to be a little bit more of a challenge. I know I said Platinum is my favorite game, but the first game I ever nuzlocked is Pokemon Leaf Green, and I've played through Kanto more times than any other region. So next time I revisit Kanto, I'll make sure that I find a much more difficult challenge. Either way, I had a ton of fun playing through this run. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. And I know I had a pretty long hiatus between videos, but I'm motivated to make more. So if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. I mostly plan on sticking with Gens 3 to 5 for now, as those are the ones that I'm most familiar with. But maybe I'll do some ROM hacks or some newer games in the future as well. It's time for me and the squad to fly off into the sunset. Thanks for watching, and I'll smell you later.